It's me, Heather Feather. Uh, today, I would like to do something fun with you. Uh, it's something that I did a couple months ago, and it's going to be... Ear to ear. Soft speaking and whispering about television shows from my childhood. So, from the 80s and the 90s. I want to give you a disclaimer. I am filming this in, arguably, the coldest room in my house. And I, I shut off the heat so that when I record, you guys have the most quiet sounds possible. So I am wearing layers upon layers of clothing. I have a tank top, a, sh a long sleeve shirt, and a sweater poncho on. I have yoga pants and these kind of towel pants over <laughs> the yoga pants on. And I have socks and fabric slippers on as well. Why am I telling you this? Because you might hear a lot of fabric movement. So I hope it doesn't distract you, but it's freezing. I would say it's 60 degrees in this room right now. Yep, I'm gonna go with that. Uh, but I hope that I can still trigger you, and I hope that this video will make you smile or remember things that you thought you forgot, or, and of course, trigger you and help you fall asleep. Okay, I wrote down <laughs> originally had a list of shows uh, for the first video and I lost it so I had to compile the rest of the list that I originally had also I don't know if you can tell my voice is very very tired I have recently been doing a lot of uh, talking uh, for work and stuffs so my voice is liable to be grainy and a little bit lower today. Okay. Okay. Sorry about the long intro. <laughs> Alright. So the first show that I want to talk about is Goosebumps. I have a notebook. Goosebumps is a show that was based on a book series from an author by the name of R. Stein. And if I'm honest with you, I cannot recall what memories I have that were books and what were television show episodes. I remember The Haunted Mask, I think, and that was about The Haunted Mask. <laughs> that couldn't be removed from uh, the child's face, I think. I also remember uh, something about a house. It was a house one. It was one of the most popular books. But I can't remember. I had all the books. And the show was really good, but I can't. Well, that's a great one to open with. <laughs> then we have Captain Planet. I feel like I really should have Googled Goosebumps so I could have had more to talk about. That's okay. You guys can talk to me about it and remind me what I forgot. So then we have Captain Planet. Captain Planet was one of my favorite, 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 favorite shows growing up. Uh, it was about uh, teenagers, I believe. It's always about teenagers. Teenagers who were given special rings by Gaia, I believe, who was the, the goddess of Earth. I don't know if she was a goddess in the show, but her name was Gaia, and she 
give. I can only seem to remember one name, Wheeler. Wheeler. Kwame. Wheeler Kwame. Um, well, she gave these kids who are from all different parts of the world special rings. And the rings give them power. And each power was different. So one had fire. I think that was Wheeler. One had water. One had earth. One had wind, I think wind, and one had heart. Oh, well, how'd it go? Earth, fire, wind, water, heart. When your powers combine, I am Captain Planet. Okay, so what happened was these kids would. can still sing almost every word of the theme song. <laughs> but I'm not going to. So, I like that show. I wish I could remember their names. Wheeler, Kwame. Heart. The power of heart was the power to talk to animals. Next. We have Ren and Stimpy. Ren and Stimpy was a show on Nickelodeon. It was about two characters. One named Ren, who was a dog, a chihuahua. And one pretty goofy looking, but that was typical for the animation around that time. Um, that show was wildly popular. I think it's still very popular with people who remember it. Hold on, I need some water. Cover your ears if you don't like drinking. Ren and Stimpy was a show that was a lot like cow and chicken in animation. Um, and it was just, it just followed the haphazard, goofy pursuits of this cat and this dog who, and the cat was very happy-go-lucky and warm and Ren was more um anal about stuff and he was always yelling steepy and uh, 
uh, they sang songs. There were st there were songs in the show. Oh, one was log. There's a song about a log. Log was a really good thing in that show. Everyone loves log. And one was about oh my goodness, I can't believe. I don't remember. One was about lumberjacks. Brain is trying to remember. I feel like lumberjacks, but I can't remember a single lyric. I almost want to say Canadian lumberjacks, but I can't remember. And also, I think the most famous song would have to be Happy Happy. Joy, joy, and uh, I don't want you to be intimidated by the lyrical prowess of the song. Yeah, the lyrics were strictly the words happy, happy, and joy, joy. It was a, it was a goofy show. It's kind of iconic now. Then we have <laughs> uh, this will should be pretty memorable for Nickelodeon babies. It is called Legends of the Hidden Temple, and it had a host. I can't tell you the name of the host, but I can tell you it also had a big giant. Stone Muppet Head named Olmec. And the show was a, a physical one, kind of like a family double dare. And you had teams, and the teams were colors and animals, so I think one of them was called the Red Jaguars. I, I think I can only remember the silver monkeys, is that right? So you had all these different teams who were composed of two children each and they would run relays or like relay races and do physical challenges then the team that won at the end got to attempt to win in the temple. The hidden temple. <laughs> That's where Omen was. And the temple was an obstacle course that they had to complete in a certain amount of time. silver monkey. And you had to assemble the monkey. Oh, you had to get the pieces too. It was a hard game. And so you had to assemble the silver monkey and I think very rarely completed it. And I hated 
when they wouldn't win. So I like to root for people. I get way, way, way too passionate about Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> Especially Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> I clap for people. I scream. I like to see people win. Next up. Um, I'm not sure if a lot of you will remember this one. It's called Hey Dude. Hey Dude. It was a show about, I believe, a camp. I think. It was a camp, but it was like a dude ranch camp. I can only remember- no, I can remember two things. I can remember that one character's name was Brad, and she was a girl. And the other character's name was... Uh, Melody, or Melanie. And she was a blonde. And she actually went on to become the wife of Ben Stiller. So you have seen her in things like Dodgeball, uh, The Brady Bunch. She played Marsha. She was on that show. I remember liking the show, but I don't remember any episodes. Just that the one guy really liked Brad. was another Nickelodeon show. A lot of these are going to be Nickelodeon shows. Cuts was another obstacle course show. It was made for athletic children. I would have lost Cuts, even though I was an athletic child. Um, so, what the game consisted of was different challenges that you had to finish in the fastest time, I think. And at the end, it was, it was three people, three challengers every episode. And at the end, they got to try to conquer the crag. And the crag was a big, gigantic, man-made mountain that rained sparkles on them and hit them with foam boulders as they tried to walk up it. And Michael Malley hosted and his female helper, partner, host was named Mo. So he'd say stuff like, tell us about the thing, Mo. And whoever scaled the crag the fastest got to keep a piece of the crag. Or so, or so they said, I don't, I don't know if they actually got to keep it. And a piece of the crag was a really cra crappy, <laughs> giant, oddly shaped plastic lump <laughs> with green light inside of it. <laughs> yeah. That's my fun story. My best friend, I think, wanted to be on that show. And I think if they went on it, they would have won. So, next. Uh, this one's old, so I don't know how many of you are going to remember. 
remember it. It was called You Can't Do That on Television. And for its time, I think it was vastly underappreciated. It was a, if I'm remembering correctly, it was a sketch show. Kind of like, kind of like Saturday Night Live, but different. There was something with a dungeon, a reoccurring dungeon skit. Mm, all these kids were in it. And of course, the adult was the villain. Keeping in line with the challenge videos, the next one is one of my favorites from my childhood. And it was called, What Would You Do? And What Would You Do? was hosted by Mark Summers, who a lot of you may know from the Food Network. He, he's done a lot of shows on the Food Network. I'm Mark Summers. He just seems like a really friendly guy. So he hosted it, and what would you do? Uh, it was a, a game show where there were a lot of physical challenges and quizzes, and people got slimed all the time and hit with pies and stuff. It was fun. Next. Oh. Next up. was one of the most popular shows growing up. I'll give you a hint. Or hints. It involved teenagers. Shocker. And colors. And fighting. And monsters and rubber suits. Did you guess it? getting people to dress up as them and appear at their parties. <laughs> my sister... My sister had the red... Hold on, I'm not laughing. My sister had a red Power Ranger at one of her when she was little. And the red... <laughs> the red Power Ranger was my cousin, who is... somewhere between four and seven years older than me. So he was a teenager at the time. <laughs> and he hated it. This is a terrible story, because you guys aren't going to think it's funny. I remember teasing him about it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Power Rangers. So, the Power Rangers involved the Pink Ranger, who was the girl that everybody had a crush on. And she went on to be in a show called Felicity. Was it the mysterious Green Ranger? The Green Ranger also happened to be the White Ranger. Is that right? I remember something about the Green Ranger and the White Ranger. He was so mysterious. So these kids, they would become superheroes in very, very, very tight outfits. And they would run around and do ninja stuffs. And when they couldn't beat an opponent on their own, they would 
another show that was hosted by Mark Summers, the guy from the Food Network. What is the show he does on the Food Network? It's the one where he shows you how the foods are made. Like Twinkies and things in factories and stuff. He's done a lot of voiceover work too. Anyway. Double Dare. Double Dare was a game show with physical challenges that kids did. And then family double there incorporated their parents into it. I loved family double there. I loved it when they won. I always wanted them to win. And they would get so happy at the end and they'd be covered in goo and slime and they'd be jumping up and down and slipping on the floors together. Here's a curveball. Uh, I don't know how many of you will remember this. It was called The Lost World. And it was based on an old story about four people. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Lost World. Uh, for some reason. I can only remember the names. Roxton? Roxton. And Marguerite. Because they had the, the sexual tension. They were the couple that you always wanted to see together. And Roxton was rugged. And brutish. And Marguerite was very helpless. Yeah, that dynamic. <laughs> so, oh, and there were dinosaurs. So they were trapped in a lost world that was filled with dinosaurs. And so they ran around finding stuff and not getting eaten. I really like that show. Then, yeah. I might have talked about this one, did I? I don't. I'll talk about it again. <sighs> Scooby Doo. Scooby Dooby Doo. Scooby Doo. Which were in relationships. Except maybe Fred. Weren't Fred and Daphne together? I don't know that that was ever established. Uh, and they had a dog named Scooby. And they went around in their mystery van and solved mysteries. And the mysteries almost always involved someone dressing up as a monster or a ghost. To scare people off of some property. And then at the end of every episode, that person went to jail. Oh, well, if you think about it, that's a little odd. Because I don't know that scaring someone is technically illegal. Uh, but anyway, so. They would solve the mystery. Not they. No, that's wrong. Velma would solve the mystery and the rest. 
rest of them would run around and Jackie and Scooby would eat food. I would have went with Jackie and Scooby. And Velma would save the day at the end with the explanation. And the explanation was always bonkers. So, like they would be getting chased by something that was clearly floating and, and throwing plasma balls at them that interacted with other things and knocked things over. But it just turned out to be a prediction machine or a fog machine with lights. It made no sense, but it's awesome. And the voice of Shaggy was Casey Kasem. If you're not from the US, you might not know who Casey Kasem is, but here he's a very famous radio personality. Uh, he has a really great voice. And it sounds really nice and sweet. And he did Jackie's voice. Later, Scooby-Doo was made into a movie with Sarah Michelle Gellar and Matthew Lillard. I really like both of those people, actually. But I really like Matthew Lillard, especially in the movie 13 Ghosts. It's one of my favorite scary movies. And Sarah Michelle Gellar's husband, This could be still really popular. I think it's still in rotation on television. It's, it's good. I like it. That's my approval. Okay. Oh, well, perfect. That brings us into oh, one of my favorite shows of all time, and that is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Okay, brace yourselves, this one's going to be long. Well, Buffy the Vampire Slayer was a show about a girl named Buffy who also happens to be the chosen one. She is every generation one slayer is born. Something, something. She's the one. And that means that she has special abilities, which largely consist of superhuman strength and resilience to fight vampires and demons. That's the basic gist of it. Um, but Buffy was a great show. It was written and made by Joss Whedon, who a lot of you might know from a show called Firefly, a movie called Serenity, a show called Angel, and uh, a, a, a web a web movie? I don't know what you want to call it. A web installment called Dr. Horrible. And uh, oh, most recently from the Avengers. And Joss Sweden is a stand-up human being. My my opinion of him is that he is an incredible man who uh, I'm emotional. This is a big part of who I am, which sounds weird, but uh, he, I really like men who try to speak on behalf of people whose voices are marginalized. And Joss is definitely one of those people. Um, one of my favorite quotes by him is when he was giving a speech 
and he says that someone asked him something like, Joss, why do you keep creating shows with strong female protagonists? And I think that was the question, something like that. And Joss answers, so witty, he answered, because you're still asking me that question. Or something like that. I just, oh, I just love him. Uh, and he loves his mom. So he created this show called Buffy. And Buffy... If you guys watched my Draw My Life, you'll notice that Buffy's in it. A really brief moment. Buffy got me through a lot. <laughs> I wanted to be Buffy so bad. I still do. I wanted to be able to just uh, fight and be good at it and protect everybody. Yeah, she's one of my favorite heroes. She's a hero, you see. She's not like us. Um, that's a quote from the show. So, she had a group of friends called the Scoobies, and they were Willow, who was a witch, and Xander, who was a human. And they fought stuff together with the help of Giles, who was Buffy. Watcher, which means that he was in charge of protecting her and educating her and training her to fight. And there was another character called Wesley and Cordelia. There's lots of uh, great characters, but when a slayer dies, another slayer is awoken. And in the show, Buffy dies a bit. And so there are also these other slayers that come into play. One was named Kendra, and one was named Faith. And Faith was Buffy's foil. She was who Buffy would have been if Buffy didn't have empathy. And then there were her love interests, Angel, which became a spin-off. It's a good spell. Uh, Angel, Riley, I didn't like Riley at all, and Spike. I love Spike. Okay, so this is why I keep pausing, because I knew I was going to get to this part. Uh, keep in mind it's late, and I, when the later it gets, the harder it is for me to stay composed. Uh, season 5, I think, brings a new character, or season 4, season 4 or 5, I think it's 5, brings a character named Dawn into the story, and Dawn is Buffy's sister, who is like seven years younger than her, or maybe less, maybe like five years younger than her, and a god wants to sacrifice Dawn, and so the whole season is Buffy protecting her sister, her little sister, and that season is a really good one. <laughs> oh. It turns out that, spoiler alert, it turns out that Buffy's sister isn't her real sister. She was made by monks and given form. She's basically a, a, a source of power. And she was given human form by monks who 
create false memories in Buffy's mind that she's her sister. So even though she's not, both Buffy and Dawn have all these memories of a childhood together. And there's a point in the season where Buffy has to make a choice, because if the god gets her hands on Dawn, the world ends. So, some of the group think that Buffy will have to kill Dawn to prevent Glory, who's the god, from sacrificing her and opening a portal and destroying the world. And Buffy absolutely refuses to, and she says that she's my sister, and she says to her closest friends and basically her only family, she says, if any of you try to touch my sister, I'll kill you. <laughs> and, uh, she saves her sister. It's a real, uh, I'm gonna start talking about it, but I think if you watched my Draw My Life, you'll understand why I love it so much. Anyway, Angel, I just mentioned. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Splinter taught them to be a ninja team. He's a radical. Teenage Ninja Turtles was a show about <laughs> ninjas. <laughs> Ninja Turtles, obviously, who were created when some ooze was dropped or discarded in a sewer, and the ooze turned four turtles into ninjas and a rat into. voiced by James Avery, who was Uncle Phil from The Fresh Prince, who recently just passed away. Uh, so he did Shredder's voice, who was the villain, the main villain, from TMNT. There was also another villain called The Brain. Brain? The... Crag? No, Crag is... He was a brain. He was a brain in a big body. I'm... No, I'm not explaining it to you right. The body was a robot. And he was a brain in the stomach of the robot. They had their own mutants named Bebop and Rocksteady. And one of them was a turtle and the other one was a, a wolf, a coyote, a cat. I'm not sure. But one of them was a turtle, sort of. It's a really good show. And Michelangelo and all of them like pizza. I'm sure you can find things on Roll 34 about the Turtles and April O'Neil. Don't go there. I know I mentioned it. Just don't go there. It's me 
talking too much. <sighs> okay. Then we have Courage the Cowardly Dog. That was a show on Cartoon Network. And it was about a dog named Courage who lived with a family of two out in the middle of nowhere. And he was raised by an elderly couple. One who was named Eustace and the other Muriel. And all these things would happen to Eustace and Muriel. And Eustace hated Courage and Muriel loved him. So Courage was always trying to save her. And he didn't talk. He would just make noises like like that. And for some reason and I remember the show being really witty or unique and I rather liked it. It was darker humor. And then we have Sina. Sina, the warrior princess. Sina was Lucy Lawless. She'd, she had this really uh, silky voice. She would say things like Gabrielle, Aries, like that. And she went galloping about the world on a horse with her sidekick, Gabrielle. And she had a a weapon, it was a circle. And <laughs> I keep thinking the name of it is Chakra, but that's not right. And she would throw her circle and it would hit everybody and make sparks and then come back to her hand like a boomerang. It was a good show. It was on a long time. A really long time. And Hercules with Kevin Sorbo, who was huge. He was so big. He used to go on the MTV sports things. Do you remember those? They used to have like this annual sports competition with celebrities. He used to go on it. Then we got Invader Sim. Was a really, really clever show made by the person who made the Johnny the Homicidal Maniac comics, which were also really clever and funny, but very dark. Not for everybody. Invader Sim was about an alien who is on Earth trying to uh, conquer Earth, basically. He has a little robot who goes by the name of Gur. And Gur is awesome. Gur is the comedic relief of the show. He always has these goofy little quips.
who didn't speak. <gasps> Pepe Le Pew, who is always trying to rape a cat. Uh, he would be arrested if he was a real person. Um, who else? Well, that was that joke. I love Bugs Bunny. scenario. If bears are constantly trying to well, go up to people, those bears would in all likelihood be put down in real life. Huh? I hope I didn't just ruin your childhood or anything by saying that. My two greatest fears are sharks and bears. Absolutely terrified of the most perfect killing machines ever. Yep. Hmm, yeah. How long have I been doing this? I think we can do a couple more. Do a couple more. Underdog? That's a very old cartoon. My mom, I think, used to watch Underdog. Came. Something they brought back when I was little. It was about a superhero dog with a cape. And I think they made it into a movie in the 90s. Uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle. I liked Rocky and Bullwinkle. Rocky and Bullwinkle was a show about a squirrel named Rocky. also had these little mini cartoons inside of it. Uh, one of which I believe was Mr. Peabody. And that was about a very, very smart dog with glasses and his human Sherman. And I think they're making that into a movie right now. I think Mr. Peabody might be voiced by the guy who plays Phil Dunphy. By the way, I love Phil Dunphy. The character. I would marry the character. Who else was in Rocky Mongo? 
Dudley do right? I believe he was another side character. Maybe. Okay. Okay, here's a good one to end it on. Well, no. I'll save that one for last. Then we have Blue's Clues. We are looking for Blue's Clues because we're really smart. Blue's Clues was a show I probably wouldn't have seen if my sister and I weren't separated by such a large age difference. Blue's Clues was, when I saw it, uh, the host's name was Steve, but I know it changed later. Steve and Blue, his dog. And they would play a game where Blue would hide things or leave little clues around the house for Steve to find. And after Steve found the three clues, he would link them together by a theme. So it would be like Blue would leave her ball print on and a teddy bear and a doll or something and then Steve would ask the viewers what it could be and it would be Goldilocks and the three bears or something like that it was a, a cute interactive game for very young children I mentioned the X-Files in the last video, but X-Files is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite shows. And it's on Netflix, though all the seasons are on Netflix. So if you want to check it out, if you have Netflix, I would. It's a really brilliantly written show about Fox Mulder and Dana Scully, who are two FBI agents who solve or attempt to solve paranormal and strange cases. And the writing is so smart. Really, really smart writing. And then of course you you have the the dynamic between the two if they're interested in each other or not and things like that. A lot of really iconic characters have come about from that show. Uh, Cancer Man, Skinner, and images that oil eyes, the black oil eyes, and aliens. It's a great show. I would watch it. One of my favorite episodes from that show is the one with Cher. And share. Well, she's not in it, but it's in black and white. The whole episode is in black and white. And at the end, there's a share song. And I don't want to spoil it for you, so I'm not going to tell you what happens in the episode. But if you want to, Google Share and the X Files and then watch that episode on Netflix. Okay. I'm going to end it with something that I hope uh, all of you can relate to or remember seeing, and that's Sesame Street. Sesame Street has been around for a very long time, and it's a really great show for young children to watch. It's also classic and iconic. Features the big bird. And Snuffleupagus. Snuffleupagus. Snuff snuffy. <laughs> the elephant who was imaginary. Bert and 
journey. Oscar the Grouch. And then lots of human characters as well. And it's an educational show. I'm 29, and one of my favorite memories from that show I don't know why I saw it if it was made when I was watching the show or my sister was but they did this celebrity montage song of Put Down the Ducky uh, YouTube it if you're interested I'm not, I'm not ordering you to but YouTube Put Down the Ducky Sesame Street with celebrities and there are all of these celebrities in it that become really, really famous down the line so you get to see them, or were already really famous then and you get to see these celebrities perform and dance to this children's song uh, it's really cool, it's, it's like a a really special snapshot in time and it makes me happy just thinking about it makes me happy Kermit Kermit was on Sesame Street, right? he wasn't a character but I know that they showed clips of Kermit on Sesame Street because I remember Big Bird talking to Kermit am I remembering right? in the song Well, I'd like to visit the moon That song? That's from Sesame Street, right? On a rocket ship high in the air Well, I'd like to visit the moon But I don't think I'd like to live there Oh, I'd like to look down at the earth from above and people I love so although I may go I'll be coming home soon cause I don't wanna live on the moon and uh, it's not that easy being green and the lovers the dreamers and me oh na 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 how's that song go? just uh, something you'll find it something that rainbow connection the lovers the dreamers and me and on that note I am going to say goodnight to all of you I hope that you remembered some lost pieces of your childhoods maybe smiled or laughed with me at some point and most of all felt tingly and relaxed maybe you're sleeping by now if not 